Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Telecom video, we're going to be discussing Ryzen. A whole bunch of information has popped up on Ryzen concerning pricing, concerning release date, yes, again, um, concerning frequencies, and also the die size information, how it compares to Intel, and a few other little bits and pieces. There are a whole bunch of people that I'd like to thank for this information, um, and they include Eugen, Henrik, Curtis, Paul, no, not me, but my namesake, and also Rod. So they all messaged me various parts of this, uh, these pieces of news, so thank you very much to them. And one last thing before I jump into the video, content will be a little slower over the next few days, simply because we've got a lot going on. We're benchmarking two graphics cards in the background, which we've already taken principal photography, photography excuse me, of one. Uh, my brain is mush at the moment because I've just attended, well, Amy and I have just attended a press event from MSI, which was kind of cool, actually. It was our first press event. So it was nice to kind of get a feel on how these things work. So that was nice. And we're going to be editing that and popping that over the chat on the channel over the next few days as well. So you get to see me uh, looking like a complete twit in virtual reality. So that was quite nice. And... There's a few other bits and pieces that we're going to be doing as well, like computer reviews. Um, we've got some memory coming and just a lot of stuff. So with that, plus all of our analysis, it's going to mean a little bit slower content. But we thank you very much for all the support, especially all the messages, emails, the Twitter. It's, it's greatly appreciated. Anyway, enough of the mushy. Let's get it into the news itself. Now, I'd hasten to add, this is not confirmed by AMD. Therefore... If this information is inaccurate, don't hung, draw, and quarter me, please. But, with all of that said, there are a couple of sources for this information. We're going to start out with the first, which is from, and I'm probably going to butcher the name of the website, I can only apologize, El Chapazos Informatico, um, which has various prices of the Ryzen processors. Now, it looks like the name Ryzen 7 1800X, for example, is what we're going to be dealing with, which personally I dislike, as I've said before. If it is the official names, I think they're just too confusing for customers. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. So, let's start out with the Ryzen 7 1800X, which is the highest end SKU. It's going to be running, from what we understand, at 4000 megahertz, 8 cores, 16 threads, and apparently it's going to be 599 US dollars. I'm sorry, I realized I just said US dollars. That's a complete lie. It's actually euros. Apologies. I'm so used to saying US dollars. So that was a nice screw up. Now that's actually a roughly half the price of an i7-6900K. And from what we understand from the leaked benchmarks and the official benchmarks, Ryzen, this particular part, should be either on par or slightly beat that particular processor. But we'll delve more into Ryzen's performance when we start talking about core sizes in just a second. Next up is the 1700X. It's still Ryzen 7. Some people are saying it's R7. Some people are just saying it's 7. I'm just going to say it's Ryzen 7 1700 in this particular instance. 1700X, it's going to be about 470 euros. I say about because obviously... MSRP means that retailers might go with slightly higher or slightly lower, depending on what they feel they can get away with, you know, in a competitive market. The normal stuff. So it's exactly the same processor, from what we can understand. The difference is it is minus 200 megahertz. So the base clock is going to be 3400, and the turbo is 3800 compared to 3600 and 4000, respectively. The processor of probably the more interest for the average person is going to be the 1700 non-X. So just to confirm, it's the Ryzen 7, 1700, no X at the end. This is what I'm saying. It's quite confusing in terms of naming. But anyway, it's still an 8-core, 16-thread part. So it looks like AMD are really pushing that. It's going to be 390 euros. Now, the difference is it's... Once again, running at a slower clock speed, they're reporting it to be 300 megahertz slower than the 1800X, which means it's got, once again, a, free, a 100 megahertz deficit compared to the 1700X. The difference is it's got 65 watts. So what I'm going to make the assumption is, and that's TDP, so what I'm going to make the assumption is that that particular processor, such as it is, 
is going to be probably more limited in overclocking potential. I'm not saying it's a definite, because obviously I'm going to make the, once again, assumption of Silicon Lottery being a factor. So we can probably still see some of these going 4000 MHz, 4200 MHz or whatever. But there you go. Now, if you're wondering, well, gee, what about the, you know, the six core models or the four core models? Unfortunately, we don't have a pricing structure for those. The only thing I can tell you is that roughly 390 euros is about the same price you're going to be spending on the on the Cable Lake 7700K. I say about because once again retailers are going to do some gouging and what have you. And it's actually pretty good news. The motherboard for the Summit Ridge platform are said to be not prohibitively expensive. Obviously, it will depend on the version you're going with, whether it's, say, the B350 or the X370. And if it is the X370, does it have, you know, extras on it? Does it have, for example, um, I don't know, the ability to make toast in the morning built onto the motherboard? Those type of things, obviously, will incur extra costs. But a basic motherboard for Ryzen is said to be around 100 uh US dollars to, sorry, about 100-ish to maybe 150-ish, which is not awful. One of the reasons behind that is because a lot of the components now that you would traditionally have seen on motherboards a few years ago is now starting to be built onto the CPU, much like Intel, which obviously is simplifying motherboard design some. Now, let's talk about the other particular parts of Ryzen. Now, there's another leak which has popped up through AMD's official Tabao cha uh, channel. Uh, Taobao, Taobao, I'm unsure of the pronunciation. I'll just read the spelling T A O B A O. Now, they're saying you can pre order the processor, and the chip is listed to be 14 nm with a base frequency of 4.2 gigahertz, which sounds quite suspect. So, we don't know whether this is like it was a placeholder. And then they've just removed it, whether it was a, you know, it's accurate and this is like some super duper chip. We just don't know. It's just been, you know, listed. And then, well, you know, that's pretty much it. So up to you if you want to put any stock into that whatsoever. I'd be shocked if it is 4.2 gigahertz, but I wouldn't certainly not be complaining. It's worth noting that some of these leaks, if you call them leaks, they're rumors in my opinion rather than leaks, but whatever are stating that Ryzen is going to launch on February 28th. Now, this is completely counter to what other leaks have said, which have uh, pointed the chip to release in very early March, like March 3rd is one figure that I keep hearing. Personally, I think it's only a couple of days different, so it might depend on retailers or maybe the part of the world for availability, or maybe 28th is perhaps the date that um, reviewers get hold of the samples or maybe that's the date that it's going to ship out to retail but the actual release date is the third there's a lot of murmurs behind the scenes and we just don't really know so that kind of sucks but anyway the next piece of news is the actual die size and then we're going to discuss how this actually impacts the processor so according to the international solid state circuits conference also known as is SCC. I'm unsure what's easier to remember, to be honest with you. AMD presented a white paper, and this white paper demonstrated how the x86 Zen cores actually fit into a smaller die area than what Intel have managed with the uh, Kaby Lake series. Now, this basically means that they're saying that it's competitive, and because it's smaller, what that actually leads to is lower costs for AMD. Now, AMD have achieved this with numerous different uh, methodologies, including the fact that they've moved to a me they've apparently moved to a metal insular metal capacitor design, which means that you can achieve less um, um, sorry you can achieve lower operating voltages. And as we've set, discussed multiple times on the channel before, you've got the Sense MI technology, which allows fine grained voltage control as well as clock speed controls. What theoretically that means is that Ryzen, as um, a chip, can basically do a lot of clock gating. So if, a, for example, a particular part of the CPU for a series of cycles is not required, for example, let's extreme example. Let's say that it's only hand, handling integer operations on one particular 
uh, thread or one particular core, then perhaps the floating point units or parts of the floating point units can be disabled. Um, and obviously, if it doesn't have to get instructions for memory, let's say they're already enclosed in cache, then it doesn't need to start doing that. So basically, it can be a lot more um, smart about how it's actually handling uh, the regulation of power across the chip. So theoretically, that reduces power consumption and also means that the chip is um, can be a little cooler. And therefore, it can make do with just 12 metal layers. Now... How much that actually translates to overclocking, we just don't know, which is really, to be honest, what I have a feeling most of you are going to really take into account. But regardless of all of that, it's pretty impressive. Um, and the fact that they've managed to squeeze the cache down to a smaller die area is also pretty cool as well. I have mentioned a couple of times over that Intel are obviously in a weird position at the moment as well as market as a whole now obviously kb lake is a pretty nice chip no one can deny that however we are already hearing about various processes from the uh, kb lake series which supposedly are going to try to respond to the ryzen 17 uh, sorry ryzen 7 1800x uh, i believe amy covered the 7740k yesterday which has uh, slight improvements to clock speed and obviously better overclocking support. But really it comes down to pricing. And it's quite interesting because another individual on Facebook uh, gave an image which is basically a questionnaire. And what that shows is questions about Ryzen. And Ryzen processors are made using the same 14nm processors Intel. Does that mean AMD processors are just as good as Intel processors? Ryzen is the official brand name to be, of CPUs to be released by AMD in 2017 and will be available for desktops, laptops, and servers. Customers might ask you how Intel processors compared to Ryzen. Here are just a few questions you may hear. So this basically is how to sell, essentially, from what I can tell, Intel processors over Ryzen, which is kind of weird because I'm hearing from a couple of people uh, that have been talking about on Twitter, as well as some message boards and forums, and I'm getting some messages as well and some emails from people that Intel are internally quite concerned about Ryzen. Now, my argument, as always, is, first of all, as customers, which is the perspective I'm looking at all of this, it's down to pricing. Just, for example, the 1700... Oh, you know what? I refuse. I bloody well refuse to keep saying the entire name of the Ryzen R7 1700. I'm just going to call it the 1700 because I'm going to go nuts. So the 1700, for example, is roughly the same price as the 1700. 7700k uh, both require dual channel memory so it's not like you have to go quad memory so it's really going to come down to pricing of the motherboard pricing of the memory which is essentially the same um, although we don't know how ryzen is going to scale with memory frequency that's another thing to take into account so for example is it going to be a case of like you need very fast memory for ryzen or does it not matter or is it better with tighter memory timers that's going to be something that we're going to need to play around with as a community because even reviewers probably don't have enough memory to really get a large memory uh, sorry a large sample size because even for example if we was to be given by amd for a review an 1800x and i'm just using that as a pure example and let's say they gave us a top of the line motherboard and we had three sets of memory to test that with that might not mean anything for lower clocked models or it might not mean anything for let's say a four core uh, uh eight thread model if it's clocked higher we just don't know how these things are going to start going into into one another especially with different bias revisions are concerned uh, as we saw with um kb lake when you had the processor released kb lake actually was really hot to begin with and then basically subsequent bios revisions helped to reduce the power consumption and therefore we've started to get higher clocks as well because heat is no longer quite the factor so it's going to take a while before we know you know how ryzen really performs in the market but price wise the 1700 is roughly on par with the 7700k that means it's going to be very difficult um for a lot of customers to choose. And I have a feeling that let's say, and I don't know the final clock speeds, but let's say Ryzen 1700 manages to go to like 4.4 gigahertz, 4.2 gigahertz on average for an overclock. Yet KB Lake goes to like 4.8 for a gigahertz, uh, for, uh, for overclocking. Well, then it's going to come down to like what's better for you, eight threads, 
and that's it or would you prefer higher clock speeds for a lower number of threads and there are a couple of other concerns as well for example one thing that Ryzen definitely doesn't do as well with um, as Intel is the fact that Intel does have double precision IPC when it comes to a couple of little uh, sorry, Intel has double precision IPC of 16 flops per clock with Skylake, and that means that 2 times uh, 256 bit FMA, so Zen only has 8 flops per clock and 2 times 128 bit FMA from what we've heard. But that's probably not going to mean super amounts when it comes to gaming. And it probably won't mean too much for other performance segments either like for example mobility so that obviously might affect certain aspects of uh, what you're doing but it probably won't affect everything and really we're not going to know that until we've got benchmarks and we just don't have enough benchmarks at the moment to really know um well too much at all now the reason i've said all of this is just because i don't want people to rush out pre-order as soon as they hear the price thing and then, you know, they get the process and then be all disappointed. I would always say taper your expectations until you've heard the final results. But with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.